Welcome back to Protein Function in Biochemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so we're going to have a, a several discussions or several videos relating to a concept called KD. All right, KD is an equilibrium constant. There's lots of things that you can get out of this with respect to protein binding. So we know proteins can bind ligands. All right, much in the same way enzymes can bind substrates. We're specifically looking here at non-enzymatic proteins, um, so or in general. So something like uh, myoglobin, which binds oxygen. It's not catalyzing a reaction, it's just binding it. So this is what we call a binding curve. All right, on the y-axis we have this variable called theta. What theta is, is it's the percentage of protein that have bound ligand. Another way of looking at it, and I'll write it like this, it's the because if you have a ton of proteins, they all have some number of binding sites for the ligand, and theta is also the percentage, the percentage of binding sites occupied by the ligand. Okay, whatever that ligand happens to be. Okay. So if theta was 0.5, or this is 50%, one is also 100%. If theta was 0.5, that means 50% of all available binding sites are occupied by the ligand, and 50% are not. If theta was 30%, then 30% of those available binding sites are occupied by the ligand, and 70% are what we call free. Okay, they're free binding sites. They don't have anything bound. And you can actually plot through various concentrations of ligand, what happens to the percentage of those binding sites that become occupied. It turns out that that relationship is actually not linear, it's actually hyperbolic. Okay? All right, so we have two curves here. All right, so one way to look at this is you have some protein, and this one we'll call, this is the binding curve for ligand one, this is the binding curve for ligand two. And we want to ultimately figure out what the KD is for both of these ligands. So this protein, whatever it is, will have some KD for ligand one, it'll have some KD for ligand two. If, you're, if you need more detail on what KD is, go back and watch one of the previous videos we go into it, details on what that is. Well, let's talk about how you estimate KD from a binding curve. The way that you do this graphically is you start at 50%. It's always at 50%, never at 60, never at 100, never at 30. It's always 50 or where this is 0.5. So what you do to estimate KD for that particular ligand and proteins, you start at 50% and you go over horizontally to wherever, um, to until basically that horizontal line hits the curve of interest. I'm gonna do the blue one first. Once it hits the curve, you go directly down. This point where it hits the x-axis, that concentration, that's the KD. So it's just an estimate because it's certainly not math-based and ultimately it's um, sort of you're eyeballing it, but I'm going to say that looks like about 1.75. So I'm going to say the KD for this first one, KD1, is about 1.75 and whatever the units of this concentration are, you use those. So this is micromolar. So KD1 is 1.75 micromolar. Okay? Now what I want to do is I want to do the same thing. I want to do it for the second binding curve. Okay, this one below it. So what I'm going to do is the same thing. I'm going to start at 50% and go over to where this line hits the second curve. All right? Oops, let me redo that. It goes over to where it hits the second curve. All right, now I'm gonna go from that point and go straight down, and this point where it hits the uh, x-axis or, or horizontal axis, look at that concentration and that is the KD. So I'm looking at this, let's just estimate it as 3.1. That looks about right. So the KD2 for this second curve or the second ligand is approximately 3.1. And since the units here are micromolar for concentration, the KD is also in units of micromolar. Okay? So another typical question that you could see on some exam is they'll give you binding curves and say estimate graphically the KDs for each one. Then you determine which ligand binds more strongly to the protein. 
The rule for KD is this. When you have a lower KD, that indicates tighter or stronger binding. When you have a higher KD, that indicates what we call weaker binding. Okay, so if I want to find the one, the ligand that binds most strongly to this protein, I want to find the one with the lower KD. And it turns out that's this KD1, so we're going to say this one right here has stronger or tighter binding. That's the more tightly bound ligand at a particular concentration. Okay, there's another way to kind of interpret this, and it's to do this kind of backwards. So what you do is you just pick a generic concentration. All right, I'm going to pick, um, let's just say 5 to make it easy, because it's pretty resolute there. So I'm going to pick 5, and I'm going to determine which one binds more strongly. So we'll start at 5, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up, and I'm going to completely bisect both of those curves. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to where that curve hits each, or where that line hits each curve, and then go over to the vertical axis, okay? So let me do that, and let me do it on this one too, okay? So what I'm saying is that at, at a ligand concentration of 5 micromolar, at the same concentration, ligand 2, the second curve is, I'm going to estimate that about point, maybe 0 0.7. Ligand 2, theta is equal to 0 0.7. And for ligand 1, theta is equal to about 0 0.9. Well, what was theta? Theta was the percentage of available binding sites occupied by the ligand. Well, notice here, for the same concentration, Ligand 1 has a higher is, occupies a higher percentage of binding sites. So wouldn't that likely indicate that ligand 1 was a tighter binder? And it would, because at the same concentration, ligand 1 occupies a higher percentage of binding sites. That means it binds tighter. Ligand 2 occupies a lower percentage of available binding sites, and so it's a weaker binder. So those are two ways to figure this out, but generally when they ask a question like this with these two binding curves, they're going to actually ask you to estimate the KD and then compare the KDs to determine which one is the tighter binder. But you could actually, if they ask you which one binds more tightly, you can use either one of these graphical methods. All right, so I hope this video made a little bit of sense. And after this, we're going to go into uh, other types of practice problems um, that involve more of calculations of KD and other things um, from a formula that we're going to look at in the next video. Thanks for watching this. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.